first composition I found today is just behind me here. And this is a waterfall that I've shot before. I actually shot a video here about two years ago and took an image at this very waterfall that you can see just behind me. But today the water levels are so much higher. This waterfall looks far more dramatic than it usually would. So I'm changing my approach to shooting the waterfall today. Um, I've got my 24 to 70 f4 lens here on the, the Z7 and I'm zooming in to about 65 millimeters. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fill the foreground of the shot with the waterfall that you can see behind me here and, and really let that sort of turbulent water really dominate that foreground. I don't want really anything else other than the water right in the, the front of that image there. And then you might just see over my shoulder that directly above the waterfall, there's actually lots of nice branches from beech trees that are reaching into this rocky gorge and the leaves are turning a really nice yellow. So I think the combination of that raging water with this be the beautiful autumnal hues for the beech trees above just makes a really nice composition when framed in portrait orientation. Um, I've got the circular polarizer on the front as well and what that is doing is it's taking the reflections off any of the rocks in the gorge there, allowing the whites of the water to punch through with more contrast. And it's also adding a lot more vibrancy to the, the yellows in the actual trees because it's taken the sheen of water off the actual surfaces of that vegetation. Um, the rest of the settings other than my focal length, I'm having to make compromises with my ISO and my aperture. So, um, and the reason for that is I'm trying to get a shutter speed of about half a second because that tends to be the sweet spot I find to get water movement just looking really nice. So you get a degree of movement, but you also capture a degree of detail. So to achieve that half second, I'm opening my aperture up to f7.1, focusing in for the foreground water. And what that is doing is it's creating a real soft effect to those leaves as they drop off in the background. And I think it actually works to my favor. Um, and another reason for opening that aperture is it, it allows me to bring my ISO down a little bit lower than it otherwise would be. So my ISO is at 250 here, and that's because this particular spot is really quite dark. So I think that F7.1 ISO 250 is the right compromise to get the shutter speed just where I want it. fairly certain that autumn is a lot later this year than it usually is. I tend to find that here on the Isle of Man my sort of peak autumn sort of colours are from about mid-October through to the end of October and right now um, I'm about five or six days from the end of October and I don't think the peak colours are here yet. There's still an awful lot of green in the vegetation so that's quite unusual I think but I think this shot behind me should work nonetheless um, so you can see I've got my camera set up here I've got the 14 to 30 f4 on the z7 and I'm shooting in landscape orientation and the first thing of note is you can see behind me that on the far bank of the river these beech trees extend right up the gorge and there's really nice yellows starting to appear in a lot of the leaves there's still a lot of green there but it definitely feels quite autumnal so I think that works really well and that far side of the bank is really quite dark so a lot of these leaves really jump out from that backdrop it creates a really strong element of contrast if those leaves weren't there it really wouldn't work at all because that area of the composition would just be far too dark 
And if you tried to raise the shadows too, too much, it would destroy the image completely. I quite like that sort of dark effect because essentially I'm shooting in a gorge here and it is dark, so we need to capture reality. The river behind me is quite raging and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of positioning it so it runs like a diagonal from bottom right through to top left. And you can see the gorge sort of runs up that direction. And the far end of the gorge, we've got like a fallen tree, which I think acts as quite a nice element within the backdrop of the actual scene. And I'm positioning the composition to try and eliminate highlights from the, the sky as much as possible. There are a few creeping into the, the, the extreme backdrop of the shot, but it's impossible to eliminate those completely. Overall, I think it works quite nicely. Uh, Settings-wise, I'm shooting this at about uh, 30 mil, so um, so the tight end of my lens. Uh, F11 to give me nice front-to-back sharpness. Also shooting at about half a second shutter speed with an ISO of 200. Again, the circular polarizer on the front to punch out those autumnal colors. I'm genuinely quite concerned at how green this forest looks. There's so many leaves still in the canopy here and it's just a few days until November. To me, that's very, very unusual. I've been coming here for years, so autumn this year feels particularly quite different to any other, I think. Um, nonetheless, I have found another shot which just sits over my shoulder here and it doesn't feel that autumnal, but I think it hangs together quite nicely as an image. So I've got my camera set up here with a 24 to 70 lens. Uh, and what I'm captivated by is, is a couple of things actually. Just over my shoulder here, there's a waterfall and it kind of splits out into three sort of separate sub waterfalls. And I think it works quite well for the foreground of the shot. It's quite an interesting and almost symmetrical waterfall layout across the foreground of the image. And then behind that, the, the river kind of goes straight off into the backdrop and then on either side of the river we've got nice ferns sort of creeping in and we've got a selection of nice trees with their trunks kind of leaning into the river and I think by framing it in such a way that we cut out the highlights peeking in through the canopy we create quite an intimate sort of scene that sort of really kind of uh, I don't know it captures this forest at its very best I think and this scene behind me really sort of jumped out to me. It's quite precarious to get down to. I had to sort of scramble on my ass down a very slippy bank to get here, but I think it's going to be worth it. Um, settings wise, it's not too dissimilar to the other shots I've taken to get uh, today. I've got the circular polarizer on for the same reasons, the contrast and vibrancy and the colors. Um, settings wise, it's about 30 mil, which allows me to crop out those sort of highlights that are creeping in from the top. Um, F11 to give me good front to back sharpness. Again, I'm going for half a second shot speed because I think it works nicely for the water. And I'm having to use an ISO of about 200. Um, I probably will have to bracket this shot as well because I'm finding in that foreground water, the highlights and the whites are really blowing out completely, which loses all the detail in that water. So by taking an underexposure bracket, I should be able to blend in that foreground water to protect those highlights and bring out a lot more detail in that part of the image.
I'm really pleased with the free images I captured from the day. Autumn colours were somewhat muted compared to my expectations, but I feel all three shots felt distinctly different from each other. With water-based locations like this, it's always a good idea to visit in the hours immediately following heavy rainfall. River levels will be much higher, accentuating rapid and waterfall features, thereby unlocking photographic potential in areas of your scene beyond the norm. All three of my images simply wouldn't have worked without the inflated river level. Anyways, that's a wrap for today. On a separate quick note, I have a very small number of 2022 calendars still available. If you're interested, visit jamesbrew.com to grab yours now. Thanks for your support and see you next time.